All right, so this is designing a fabulous wedding in four weeks. Jasmine, are you still with us? I'm here. We've got some footage um, from, from, from trying on the dress. <laughs> We've got some footage from, uh, from doing, I think, your ring selections. And then I was going to basically let, let the three of you guys kind of talk about this crazy adventure we're embarking on. Um, Jasmine, you haven't seen any of these videos, have you yet? No, not at all. So I'm excited. I'm really, really, really excited to see what's going to come together. So, so tell you what, why, don't you, why don't you guys just kick it off by maybe telling, telling us, telling Jasmine a little bit about what you've been up to in the last week. Okay. And then we can show some video. And then who knows? I mean, this, this will go wherever, wherever we and the audience want it to go. So we may end up early. We may, you know, we, we can decide this as we go along. Perfect. Well, I'll start a little bit about talking about the usual process. When you're usually planning a wedding, most people tend to plan a wedding before four weeks' time. So that usual process is a little bit different. Brides tend to think about their gowns first. That's often something that they're very excited about. And you know, sometimes they've been thinking about for years before there's ever a man involved. Um, and sometimes the, you know, the venue or the style of wedding they want also dictates the gown. But a lot of times that kind of thought process of thinking about what kind of gown they want um, happens, you know, even before the wedding planning starts. Um, um, usually, when we have a wedding day, you know, we start working on venue and photographer first, um, kind of at the same time as the gown, um, venue and photographer, because those things tend to book the quickest. So, you know, a great venue goes really fast, especially in a month like August. Same thing with, you know, and an amazing photographer like Jasmine, I'm sure, can tell you herself, right, Jasmine? You book up really, really fast, especially for those really busy summer months. Absolutely. So those are usually things I recommend you know, to do first before you do anything else. So we're really lucky here that we already have an amazing photographer, so that's one thing we don't have to worry about. Um, we're working on the venue right now, and we've been looking at a few different venues, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But kind of the first thing we started off with is talking about the gown and, and what Laura wanted. Um, you know, Usually with the gown at some of the nice um, boutiques in town, you have to, again, be there six to nine months in advance because you usually you'll try on a sample gown from a designer, <laughs> you'll figure out what you like about it, what you don't like about it, and then you let that designer know and they make the gown. So obviously in a four week time frame we don't have that luxury, but we had a fabulous time, if I say so myself, looking and going to a couple different boutiques and seeing what they already had there that we could get in a four week period, you know, and get it altered and get it so that we have the wedding gown of her dreams. So tell me what that process was like for you. Really scary, <laughs> just because um, you know the gown is something that I've been just waxing and waning over for as long as we've been engaged, which has been about seven months. It was one of the first things I started looking at, and I have such a hard time making decisions anyway, having to sort of try things on and be like yes or no, yes or no, right then and there was really hard, really hard. Mm -hmm. But um, but we've walked away with quite a few options that were yeah. definitely doable. We, uh, we have about a six minute little video that kind of just kind of uh -oh. rolls through that day. <laughs> Jack, do you would like to see it? Maybe you can kind of talk. All, I'm, I'm, not sure if, I'm not sure if it's something you talk over or just kind of watch, but we'll just kind of. Okay. Fabulous. We're kind of going as we go along. So, Jasmine, we're going to tuck you away again, which I know you're not objecting to. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. So, this is a, a little six minute clip that was pulled together based on, uh, on the dress. So how do you feel about going dress shopping? I'm really excited. This is one of the most fun parts, getting to try all sorts of different styles. And make sure you try something that you might not think you like, because you never know. But also be really honest with yourself and the dress fitter about what you're comfortable with and what you're not. OK. You guys ready to have some fun? Yeah. Let's, Let's go. Do it. Yay. Here we are at LaBella Lanes. Thank you. You ready to have fun? You're like a celebrity. <laughs> Something's happening soon, I hear. Yeah, Very soon. Less than a month. Very soon. So here, yeah, let's just start from the fitting room because yes, this is where you get to be comfortable. So there's some chairs in here, so if you want to just Great. set your bags and coats and anything. Thank down, you. Throw somebody in on um, here. Yes. So everyone's together. We're gonna bring them in here. We can sit out here. You know what? We'll take you out here. Do you want to sit out by the room? Line? You don't want to see the goods. But yeah, if you just want to. <laughs> We'll take like a private bedroom for the day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So the there's chairs that are here, there's a couple out there. Just now let's get Laura out. I mean, she's going to be walking this whole catwalk. So, yeah, there won't be a bad seat in the house, really. Mm -hmm. So, Laura, this is 
these on the gown. We have them organized by designer. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there's any particular designer you are interested in. These are Alvina Valenta Jim Helm, so all New York designers. I love this one. But yes, very known so for their like that. Duchess yes. silks. No, but everything 100% silk in this line from New York. Um, looks like you like this one. I, I do. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Let's just kind of turn them out so I'll know which ones, and then I'll kind of walk through the a little bit, and then I'll the take them back to your fitting room. So, exactly, kind of here. Over here we have a lot of like Ravini and Christos and uh, Cymbeline. Um, so again, just some of our more higher end. Like again, really with wedding gowns, it's all about the fabrics. Like, you know, the 100% silks versus, you know, some are going to be like some silk poly blends, so I can kind of show you those. But yeah, these are... These are the number one like designers that we This has fitting too. I know, this is Ravini. Oh, They're out of Toronto. Mm. But yeah, so yeah, beautiful. exactly. So you're getting the hang of it. Yeah. It's not rocket science. I'm just here to find you a dream gown. So I mean, let's just go through and anything you kind of like. Okay. Exactly, let's kind of turn it out and we'll take it back to the fitting. The best line on that would be very Yeah, I like the... The sweetheart. I brought you here is because Labella Lanes is one of the you know, best gown stores and boutiques here in Seattle. They have such a great selection. As you can see, they have mm -hmm. some amazing designers. So it's really fun to come here and see. They have such a breadth of designers and different styles that it's nice to come here and try on, like she was saying, try on these different styles so you can really get a feel for what you like. And then once you've narrowed down what you like, really find that dream dress. I can really tell they have a, a wide variety of different things to try on. And I like how they're separated by the type of dress that it is. It makes it really easy to sort of hone in on what you're looking for. Good. How are we doing so far? Yeah, I mean, I think we've got like five yeah. or six, which is a great place to start. Because like I said, once you see them on, that's when you're, you really start to zone in on stuff. Yeah. Good. You're like, great, well, let's start. Let's start. Yeah, fashion show out here, dressing room in here. Fabulous. And you want to be ready for Alice? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Is there one I should start with, or are we just kind of winging it? It's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> we can do whatever you want. This is here. Hi, ladies. Dress number one. Look at this little figure. Wow. That's the best thing about this. You just got to look I like the color. Yeah, I like the color. I need a little tonal separation between my Seattle tan and my dress. <laughs> I, and I like, I like definitely longer rather than shorter. Like no poofs or that kind of thing. I'm more like, like classic in that sense, yeah. exactly what I was looking for, something with some sort of a strap like that. It just feels more comfortable. So is it just that mid part? Yeah, I don't love the, I don't love this. Okay, let's get a little closer to the mirror. But yeah, I can show you some different options. It's like a cummerbund kind of. Yeah. I think it's one of the first <laughs> Extreme I mean, blows up. This. Like, this was definitely. I just that one felt like it was like there was no there was no structure to that one and it was just so thin. It looks white, doesn't it? Very white. Can we dye this? Dark tank. I mean, you wouldn't want to. Tea stain. Yeah. But that's not. 
But I love the neckline. I love I just love the top. I love it. It's awesome. You know what I like about the back? It almost looks like these petals, like it's petals falling down. Like it's just. I like this more than Agnes, you guys. I like that. It does look really good on camera. It looks horrible on the model on the website. I wish they would just let you take pictures in it. All right, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so looking back on that experience and seeing yourself, you know, on film wearing all those gowns, what do you think? Uh, you know, I pulled the pic, as soon as I got home, I pulled all the pictures off of the websites because they won't let you take pictures of yourself in the gowns. And I really did not like that last one that I was talking about how much I loved. But seeing myself in it, now I remember why I liked myself in it. Does that make sense? No? Yes. Actually, so really, they won't let you take pictures of you in your wedding dress no. when you're there? No. So I guess doing a, a live event like this, you get a little piece Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> A preview. Well, and you got to see yourself walking down with a yeah. fake bouquet and the veil. You kind of got yeah. the whole picture. Can you maybe do some screen grabs of those for me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Email to me. You still with us, Jasmine? I'm still, I'm definitely with you. And um, I have to say one, I am like the luckiest photographer to be able to photograph Laura because if she wears like any of those dresses or half of that dress, she still <laughs> looks so great. And secondly, Daniela, you need your own like TLC show or something. <laughs> I'm just, like you're just like in your own element. I'm like, oh my god, why doesn't Daniela just do the thing for it? Like, can she just talk for me? I think we'll be fine if that happens. <laughs> Thank you, Jasmine. <laughs> Christy, what I want to hear your info. I mean, you owning JuneBugWeddings.com. I mean, you have so much visual input and so much information on gowns what would be your two cents worth on well it was so fun to get to go and actually you know be in the store and watch Laura try everything on um, it was great also to watch your sort of progression of seeing you in it and how you felt and there's definitely a difference between the, the dresses of how you held yourself and how you carried yourself and your energy level when you got out there there were a couple of dresses that you obviously liked a lot better and you just you could just tell you were like in it you loved it and a couple of the other ones you were like, yeah, she wanted to like turn back around and go right back into the dressing room. Um, so I think that says a lot of what a wedding dress can do for you also. And to keep that in mind, like you want to feel so fantastic in it, just energy wise, um, you want to feel so beautiful and, you know, and the comfort factor too, of like comfortable in it so that you're not shifting and pulling Absolutely. it up all the time and worrying about it. There's so many pieces that go into it. Um, and then you can just really see when it all comes together you know, you just kind of transform into a bride and, and see yourself in a different way. So that was fun to see you kind of get to that place with a couple of the different dresses, especially I felt like it happened with that last one a lot mm -hmm. more. Um, I also love the, the way that as soon as you, you're, when you're trying on a wedding dress, when you add in the veil yes. and then you grab the bouquet and all those little extras really help to figure out and to see yourself as the full bride when you're just wearing the dress. It's, it's just one piece of it, but when those little extras come together, suddenly it's like a whole different situation. So I think that helped. It seemed the like that helped a lot. The veil is huge. It's huge. It's huge. And that, it's, it just all of a sudden transforms you into you're wearing a gown, which is already a big deal. You're wearing this white gown, but somehow the veil just finishes that off. Mm -hmm. And for me, I also I always tell my brides, you know, if you're gonna go try on gowns, bring shoes if you can. You know, if you already have your shoes, or at least bring shoes of the same height that you have. Do your hair and makeup. You were great. You looked amazing. You know, you were all ready for it. Sometimes brides don't think about that. And so they show up for their gown fitting and their makeup's not done and their hair is all messy. And then they're trying to imagine themselves what they're going to look like. And it just makes it a little bit more difficult. Yep. So, you know, do everything you can to have, you know, even undergarments, whatever you have to prep yourself. And it'll just make that process a lot more easy. Yep, absolutely. I have a question for Christy. Yeah. Um, I kind of believe, or somewhat, I think it's advantageous to work backwards to the actual start of creation. So from your perspective, because you guys are always putting out like editorial style shoots in addition to like real weddings mm -hmm. that all look so beautiful. So mm -hmm. now we, that we have like the end in sight. So the end is theoretically the wedding. So how can, what would you suggest for prospective brides or brides watching? How can you work from backwards to the start 
and offering what type of advice they should be considering as they plan their wedding. Clearly working with Dan somebody like Daniela is a good thing, but what are some things that brides can keep, can keep in the forefront of their mind as they plan for the wedding with the end result of hoping mm -hmm. getting featured like on Junebug or um, publication or submissions or anything like that? Sure. Well, I think that regardless of what you want that end product to be, whether you do want to you know, have it published out there somewhere or whether you want to um, just have it for your own keepsake for the rest of your life, but really the most important thing in my mind is that you find the things that you connect with that your wedding and your marriage mean to you. What it's all about, that it has to be based in something that's really meaningful. Um, if it's just uh, you, you choose a color because you think it's pretty because your friends think that that's you know the way it ought to be or something that's kind of artificial or, or um, you know outside of you it doesn't have that strong of a connection and then it doesn't translate all the way through to the end um, I think even if you know I've seen weddings that are absolutely gorgeous but if there's no personal connection to the bride and groom and why they chose that and what it really means to them um, personally it it just it's kind it of lacks staged. They feel staged. It just kind of lacks something, and so when you know when you just when you can tell that the the couple and their families um, are really you know this whole event is a representation of your lives and what this marriage means to you, it just takes the whole thing to a whole other level. And I I feel like that really translates through photos, um, through everything that you can you can see that and um, that it really helps. You know, if you want to get it published, that kind of thing really helps. Just be totally authentic. One of the things I always ask my brides to do, if they can, or my couples, is to give me something that's their point of inspiration. And I've had, I've had brides give me a scarf that was meaningful to them. You know, they liked the colors and the texture, but it was meaningful. Um, one couple gave me their wrapping paper from the ring box. You know, it can be anything, and, and usually, you know, even though it sounds funny, it's wrapping paper or it's a scarf or a tire. I had once had a pair of shoes. They were drawn to that object for something, whether it was, you know, the, the silk, um, you know, the texture of the fabric mm -hmm. or the colors or something to them that was meaningful. And sometimes it can be something in their home, a piece of art or even a rug in their home, and it's meaningful to them. They're drawn to it for some reason. So then that gets into my hands, and I can take that piece, and I can translate that into their decor or into what their cake's going to look like, you know, but it, having Having it come from actually you and something that's meaningful to you, even if you don't know why it's meaningful to you but you're drawn to it, that can make a huge difference and you can weave that into all the different aspects of your wedding and make it so much more personal and then like you said Christy, it translates much more into something warm and personal versus if you just give me a picture out of a magazine and said, well I kind of like this, why do you like that? You know, I, I'd rather have something from you and then go from there as a jumping off point. Definitely. Does that answer your question Jasmine? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I would say also the other the other great thing, just like Jasmine said, was you know working with professionals who are experts. Um, I know you know it's maybe not in everyone's budget to have every every single thing covered by the very best professional, but if you can get that team in there to support you um, to really cover the things that mean the most to you. If you're a photography person, and you know. I mean, well, I think wedding coordinators in general, that's kind of the base. I really, if anyone can do it, I totally recommend working with an event planner or wedding coordinator because they just, it's like a world of difference for you and your stress level planning your wedding. Um, but then after that, it's, it's finding those right professionals that you are really excited about, that mean the most to you, whether it's, you know, your photography and your catering, or if it's your, you know, your dress and the music are the thing that you really want to have so much on that day, getting those people that are experts that can do it for you, um, it, it makes all the difference in the world as well because then you're not having to work on your wedding day or um, you know asking your friends to do so much that they can't actually be there to enjoy the wedding themselves. Um, excellent wedding professionals are lifesavers. Yes, and one thing that always a lot of times I, I have seen couples say, oh well, you know, my, one of my bridesmaids really wants to help, you know, be the planner on the day of or the coordinator. On the day of, they don't want to. They want to drink and they want to have a good time and they want to party with you and celebrate you. They do not want to be coordinating the wedding, even if if they want to be wedding planner. On that mm -hmm. day, they are there for you and to celebrate you, and they don't want to have that role as much as they might think at that point. But mm -hmm. that's something to think about too. If you are going to have someone else, a friend, you know, help with that process and have it someone that's not in the wedding party, that's not a family member, or so forth. Yep. Yep. So Laura, so I'm going to put you on the spot then and ask me, or ask you, what you think would be a point of inspiration for you. What, you know, an object or something that you like or something that we could take and kind of as a jumping off point for decorating your wedding, designing your wedding in four weeks. 
Mm -hmm. Well, I brought this fabulous fabric right. that I found at a yard sale. I'm a yard sale junkie. <laughs> um, and I was planning on just decorating my entire wedding from your yard sales, but thankfully I don't have to do that now. <laughs> um, this is a fabric, a drapery fabric that I found. Um, totally uh, scored on. And I was sort of going with that gold and really warm tone colors, mm -hmm. like brown sugar and mm -hmm. gold and copper and things like that. So, so. so I don't know if you can see this very well on, on film, but yeah, it's absolutely... Yeah, I know. I've been... I, no, I'm actually watching a slightly delayed feed from the actual, like, Ustream, and so I can see the fabrication quite nice. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It has, like, this beautiful luster to it, uh, you know, nice, rich colors, and I think... So when I see this, it makes me think that, you know, we've talked a little bit about what kind of venue you want, Laura. You said you wanted something really rustic. Mm -hmm. with a little bit of a juxtaposition so I can see the venue. I can only see like this really almost a rough building, whether it's a barn or something with brick or something that's just a little bit more rough. Yeah. And then seeing the juxtaposition of, of chandeliers um, that you've mentioned that you've been collecting and beautiful, really luxe fabric like this. And I love um, the idea of taking something that is old and worn and contrasting it with more of like a modern stripe that still mm -hmm. feels like sort of retro, you know? I think that's absolutely beautiful. And, so. you know, it's clear that you were drawn f to it when you saw it. And I think this, you know, this is the exact kind of thing that helps at least point us in direction and then go from there and have me give you some ideas of, well, do you like this or do you like that? And then have you be able to make choices from that versus mm -hmm. kind of starting from nowhere and just starting from magazine tears or something that's, this is a lot more easier to work with and I think it, it makes it more personal and the end result will be a lot more personal and warm. Yay, yeah. yay. <laughs> Good. Well, Laura, I have a question for you. Um, just so that we have this documented and we're all on the same page, like, what are some of the things that you're worried about? And just feel free to, like, let it go. What are some <laughs> of the things that you're a little worried about as we enter into this? Because more than anything, um, I think that all of us, from Daniela to Craig to Chase to Christy and everybody, Celeste and Sarah and everybody on board, I think we all want to work really hard to um, make sure that all your worries are put at bay, but let it rip. Like, I want to know what you're scared of. Like, are we scared? Are we scared about? And um, I think hopefully in the next three weeks we can work on, like, maybe minimizing that. I, I think that um, obviously having Daniela is such a huge relief for me. So people keep calling me and asking me, "Oh my gosh, what do you, you know? What are you stressed about?" The things I'm most thinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm not worried about the wedding at all. I'm worried about having to make decisions on like who to cut from the guest list and you know where what am I going to do about my dress because I'm so indecisive and having to actually pull the trigger on that I'm worried about that and I'm worried about um you know, when am I going to find time to get my roots done and <laughs> okay, <I'll take> care <laughs> how am I going to work out and tan and get my teeth bleached and like get my hair done all within four weeks that's what I'm most worried about but the rest I mean the wedding I'm just I'm putting my complete faith and trust in you guys and just hoping that you all can don't make decisions for me so I don't have to do it. So. You know, I have to say though, like that actually makes me feel really good because those are all really normal bride things to worry about. So you're not yeah. alone. Like everybody's worried, like wanting to get the roots done and their teeth <laughs> and the dress. Yeah. So like that actually makes me feel good because it's like you're still, like this is still very much like a wedding thing. Like for me, what I didn't want you worried about was like, Oh my God! Like, what if Jasmine sucks? Or what if we the wedding doesn't? Oh yeah, come I'm worried together? about that. <laughs> or, like, <laughs> so as long as they're like normal worries, that makes me feel better. And um, but either way, we'll all I'm sure work really hard to make sure you feel extraordinarily confident. As and you I'm just not. Them. I'm already confident about that. So you don't need to worry about that. I'm just so relieved that I have this amazing team of people around me to do it all for me. Yay. I don't have to think. <laughs> well, that's good. And I, same as Jasmine, like, I'm glad that you're worried about normal bright things and not about the whole production because it could very easily turn into the fear and the stress about the whole production of it. And I think all of us doing the production in a part of it really want to make sure that this is still a, for you all about the wedding and about the fact that you're getting married and not that it doesn't become overshadowed by what we're doing. The, you know, what we're doing should just kind of happen alongside and kind of behind the scenes. Definitely. I have, this is Sarah, um, I have some questions from the internet if you'd like to answer some of those. 
Um, for Laura, we have a question. Uh, why did you agree to do this wedding? And, and <laughs> especially, you know, having this wedding broadcast for learning photographers is, is a very unique option. So why did you decide to do that? Well, both Billy and I, um, we've been engaged for s over seven months. So we, I'm a wedding photographer um, by trade, and so we had kind of like pushed out our wedding date really far in order to make time for planning and um, to schedule out a block of time during the summer because we wanted a summer wedding. And um, we just, neither of us really wanted to wait that long, but there were all of these other things that were kind of in the equation for us that we had to put off our wedding for. And um, we saw the date on the internet and it was just like the perfect storm. We had nothing booked mm -hmm. yet. We had the weekend open and all of our family was coming into town for a family reunion for Labor Day weekend. So it oh, was I like, we just, we were like, this could be a really amazing opportunity. And all of those other things that we were worried about holding off for just didn't quite compare to the opportunity of having a free wedding with Jasmine Summer. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and, and actually, for those who don't know, you're a photographer yourself, right? Yes. A, yes. w a wedding photographer specifically, is that correct? I shoot weddings. I also produce photo shoots for stock photographers, and I do styling, and I kind of I wear a lot of hats, but yeah. Right. Um, and this question is for Daniela. How many hours do you think you're going to put into planning this wedding? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, they're definitely going to be very concentrated hours. Uh, you know, it's hard to, to say. Um, I, you know, we've got a great team here, and I think the more people jump in and say, hey, like this, you know, I put a blog post up about what we're doing, and I instantly had this great gal email me and say, hey, you know, I custom designed jewelry. I would love to do something for Laura. Why doesn't she come in and, and let me design something for her? So, yes, we'll definitely be in touch with you. <laughs> and, you know, that kind of thing really helps because then that's one less thing that I have to jump on and, and try to find and so forth. So. The cool thing about doing something like this is sometimes things come out of the woodwork and people present themselves that are interested in being, you know, doing something fun like this. So things like kneading your teeth bleach, you know, <laughs> all those kinds of things. Seriously, you know, that well, obviously I already have a lot of connections here in Seattle, and there's people that I love to work with, but other people that want to be involved, fabulous. I think that that all helps, but. Definitely, you know, we I've planned a wedding in 10 days for Wish Upon a Wedding, so this isn't the shortest wedding I've ever planned, but definitely my lead time's usually six months to 12 months to 18 months for the really big ones. So four weeks is a little bit of a challenge, but there'll be definitely a lot of late, late nights involved. <laughs> <laughs> for all of us, yes. Yes. Um, so this question is for Jasmine. Um, how much of the <laughs> wedding process do you usually get involved in when you're preparing to photograph a wedding? Um, I like to, ideally, I like to request a soft timeline about three to four weeks in advance if the bride and or the wedding coordinator or designer has it. I'm late already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, clearly. Um, what, I'm like, Daniela, I need a timeline. No. Oh, I'm on it. <laughs> no, um, for me, it's after I um, have a consultation with a client and then I shoot her engagement session, I'm pretty hands off up until about three to four weeks out from her wedding because a lot of times photographers have frustrations about approaching, in a, we uh, approaching a wedding and feeling like they don't have enough time in a timeline. But if they're not asking for the timeline until two days or three days before the wedding, there's no, there's no room for communication. There's not, they're, they're not going to change the timeline two days before the event. But if you're talking to the coordinator and or or the designer and you have four weeks in advance just to at least have a conversation and explain this is how much time i'll need for a first look or this is how much time i'll need to shoot the details before the guests come into the room mm -hmm. having those types of conversations should um likely occur three to four weeks out of the wedding so that we can make small changes um to the timeline if possible but other than that it's the designer's job to do her job, and it's the coordinator's job to, or the coordinator's job to do her job. So I'm not going to step in. I just need to come, explain where I'm coming from and explain, okay, I need 15 to 20 minutes here, and I need 15 to 20 minutes there. And Jasmine, just so you know, since you and I haven't had a lot of chance to talk about this either, usually I have a big checklist too that I use that I send out to my photographers, usually about six to four weeks out to kind of ask, you know, what, 
when, how far in advance before the ceremony do you like to shoot the first look and how much time do you need for that? Are we doing family photos after that or are we doing it maybe during the cocktail hour? You know, when would you like to get your room shots? And I make sure I talk to the service staff and everyone at the venue so that there's no one in the room, you know, putting down water or anything so you can get that beautiful room shot. So those are all things that I'll ask you, what you need time for, and then that all gets built into the timeline. So before a timeline ever goes out, those things have already been talked about and put into it so to make sure that we're all on the same page. Laura, do you want to, um, are you considering doing your family pictures before the ceremony? Yes. Oh, I love it. Okay, <laughs> this is why I love shooting photographers' weddings because they like get it. Like it's a party and you don't want to miss so much of the party. Yes, thank so you. So ideally, if we theoretically will say hypothetically start the ceremony, I don't know, for math's sake at five o'clock. Well, I would want Laura tucked away by 4.30. Yep. I would want to do family pictures from 4 to 4.30, bridal party from 3.30 to 4, and then a first look from 2.45 to 3.30. And that would be pretty much like an ideal situation. So if I started if I started the first look at 2.45, I would want Laura dressed at 2.30, and I would probably ideally like to be in the room by 1.30. Perfect. See, now look how much we there just we got go. done. Timeline, we're done. That's right. yes. <laughs> Communication. <laughs> So yeah, Craig, maybe we'll just move in here and we'll just have these sessions, you know, a couple times a day and we'll get the wedding plan in a week. <laughs> I don't know if Craig can handle all that estrogen. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so I have another question from Paula in Ohio for Jasmine. Um, do you photograph everything leading up to the wedding, such as showers, bachelorette party, meeting with the cake, flowers, et cetera, to put into an album? No. No? What, what parts of the short answer that's the short the short answer is no if somebody wants if a client would, would want, want me to shoot um, let's just say the, the rehearsal dinner um, I will charge um, a pretty hefty hourly rate because it's so much time and effort to get to that particular location but at the same time um, if it's advantageous for if I'm coming in from out of town and it's advantageous if the client is having like a rehearsal dinner two days out from the actual wedding, if it's advantageous for the bride and groom and more cost effective for them to bring in like a different photographer, that's fine because most of the time I've never had clients or I've never had clients put in the rehearsal dinner pictures into a wedding album because I feel like somewhat it disturbs like the flow of it because basically a wedding album is to document the wedding itself and most of the time from my experiences it starts the day of preparation and ends usually like it with dancing or an exit picture. All right, great. Um, I have, uh, oh, yes? Yeah. Oh, I'm hearing my own voice. Um, <laughs> okay, so another question for Jasmine. How does the design theme of the wedding influence your photography style? And for example, when you saw Laura's gold fabric, what kinds of ideas started going through your head? Oh, um, <laughs> um, actually, I don't really um, photograph things differently according to the theme that's actually going on. I try to just walk in and um, shoot it the way that the designer would want it. And um, one really important thing to bear in mind is to always think about it from like an editorial perspective. At least I do. I try to shoot details in a manner that is, I try when, so I think on a wedding day, um, a wedding photographer has to think in as three or four different photographers. I am a wedding photographer, but then at some points of the day, I'm a photojournalistic photographer, and at other points of the day, I'm a lifestyle photographer, and at other points of the day, I'm a commercial photographer, and at other points of the day, I'm an architectural photographer. And it sounds absolutely crazy, but it's kind of the nature of what we do. So for as I'm shooting the detail photos, I'm thinking like a commercial photographer. So even if that means me having to rearrange certain elements on the table itself, um, because for instance, I don't like salt and pepper shakers. I don't like sugar packets. I don't like butter. I don't like bread. There's so nothing worse than those pink sugar packets. <laughs> right. Yeah. Take the sugar packets off. Yes, like nobody you. likes those. Um, Christy, I'm sure will agree. Like when you get detail photos and there's like salt and pepper shakers or ranch dressing, you're like, oh, it's, it's you know? just a little distracting. Yeah. <laughs> just a bit. Just a yeah. bit. So um, I'm at that point to answer the question short would be I'm thinking like a commercial photographer. So I don't um, approach a situation saying this wedding is styled vintage. So I'm going to shoot it like I'm a vintage photographer. It's just I just shoot it like Jasmine, but I try mm -hmm. to make sure that there's uniformity in how the end result will be achieved online. And that makes such a huge difference too, because once in a while when you do have a client, let's say that's on a bit of a budget, and we might have this beautiful floral arrangement, but you know, if it, you know, because they're on a budget, we might make it beautiful three ways around, and the piece that's 
behind the back that no one sees is mostly greenery. It doesn't have the expensive peonies and $30 of stem orchids. It's filled in with greenery. Well, I've seen many a photographer go, oh, this would be a cool shot, and they go behind the floral arrangement and they shoot out, and, and then it gets published somewhere, and you know, there's just a picture of all these leaves. And it's not what the client wanted, that's not what anybody wanted to see, but photographers who don't know any better might do that. So it's great, Jasmine, that you know that and you know, shoot with that artistic eye, the editorial eye, and everything that ends up going being out there is something that you know the client wanted, something that the designer wanted, something that everyone can be proud is out there. Absolutely. Okay, so um, if anybody else out there in the chat room has any questions, um, feel free to to go ahead and ask them at the moment. I'm running a little bit low, so. Do you, do you guys have anything else to talk about there? Well, I was going to ask Laura. I haven't had a chance to talk with you since you guys. We went to E.E. Um, e. Robbins the other day to look at rings, met Billy there, which was really fun. And I didn't, haven't had a chance to ask you how that went, if you guys made any decisions. We have a call in to find out if one ring that I like can be sized. Okay. Um, but we are probably going to order Billy's ring, and so he'll be wearing a fake ring <laughs> at the <laughs> wedding. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they're doing their best to help us get them on time. So, Fabulous. yes. Very cool. And, and speaking of which, we have some video of your, uh -oh. uh, of your ring trip as well. Uh -huh. It's not as long. It's not okay. as, you'll, you'll appreciate that. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so. No pictures of you in ice skating poses this yeah. time. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> All right, so here are the rings. Here we go. You ready to find a ring? I am. Here we are, Edie Robbins. Hi. Hi. Hi, Laura. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. All right. Excited to see what you guys want to do. Okay. So we put some back again. She said that that one's on sale now. Well, I know, but it's <laughs> He's cheap. <laughs> All the things you learn when you're doing shopping. You want her to be happy, right? <laughs> oh. Okay, so we're going to get that on the If we were going to get that in platform, how much would that be? I would get pricey. Because metal is expensive, right? So we're using That's less metal, but more diamond. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that reasoning. <laughs> Um, like this one. This one was that right. One this is white gold. Yeah. What about that one? <laughs> oh, you know that it would be a great right hand ring. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Too late, she already asked for the grill. <laughs> be a great right tooth. It'd be a right, good right tooth stone. Okay, I'm gonna cruise. Okay. Yeah. Fabulous. <laughs> Can we, is there a way to get a close-up of her engagement ring? Oh yeah, this could be a good inspiration piece too. Yeah, it's very, it's just beautiful. It has that vintage feel to it. And so that's one of the things when we were looking at rings, you know, trying to find something that matched with it that didn't, because a couple of them overpowered it almost a little bit. Yeah. So it, you got, it went back to being a little bit simpler, but something that had that vintage feel and the same coloration. And I just, I love this ring. It reminds me of what we were talking about, that, that luxurious, almost vintage feel and, you know, something, a building that's a little bit more rustic perhaps, mm -hmm. so. This is, the ring can often be a little bit of an inspiration as well, like you said, because I'll, I'll see brides with something really unique and modern, and I'll see someone like this with something really vintage. So that can say a lot about what you like, even if you have a hard time voicing it. I get a lot of brides that, that like things, but they don't know why they like them or have a hard time putting a voice to what they like, and they'll pull you know 50 pictures from a magazine and don't know why they like those. So it's great to look through and see things like this that help clarify mm -hmm. what they like. Do you have another question? Yeah, we Yay. have another question from the chat room. Um, Jasmine, how do you get your couples to trust your ideas and to play along with you? Um, I think that a lot of it is established, um, if you can believe it, it sounds crazy, but I think a lot of that is, a lot of the trust is established online. It's done not in person. So um, I try to, kind of share an experience or two either on my website or on my blog and I'll try always to showcase images 
that will solicit trust in the future from not my present clients, but from future clients. So I know that it probably sounds crazy. It's not a definitive answer, but um, I think that the more I uh, the more I put myself out online and out on the web, people will somehow connect with it. And so when I ask them, when I ask a ride to lay on the floor, she will, and she trusts that I want the best photo, and I will always take care of her dress too. So, well, yeah, I guess putting putting yourself out there on the web um, makes the bride feel like they know something about you. If you have more Absolutely. of the story out there already, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, so now that we've heard your ideal timing for the wedding day, um, when the schedule is tighter, how do you how do you work with that? How do you cut things down? Um, like so, yesterday's I shot a wedding um, on Saturday. So we had a first look scheduled at 2.45 and the, the, they were just finishing up makeup at 2.45. So all of a sudden you kind of, you go into like, oh my God, we go into like a different type of reconnaissance mode. And so it's just, just shoot everything. So trying to um, approach the, the makeup artist and the hair designer, like I went up to them away from the bride. I didn't want to have the conversation in front of the bride to let her know that I was stressed. So I just went up to them and I was like, hey, you know, we're supposed to be starting pictures right about now. Is there any way that we can expedite this just to ensure that the timeline is saved and that we get the possible best pictures for your portfolio as well? Because I know that the makeup designer wants good pictures and the hair designer wants good pictures. So if I, we have to work as a team. So if I can explain to them that it's in their best interest to hurry as much as possible, then we can. And um, we were running a little bit late, but then you just work faster. I know that it sounds ridiculous, but you ha I don't have any other way to explain it. You just got to get it done. Hustle. Hustle. Yeah, I mean, like, that's just it. You got to work fast. You know, from a planning perspective, too, one of the things I try to do is, uh, you know, I'll ask the hairdresser and I'll ask the makeup person how much time they need, and then I'll buffer in more. You know, you all, like we were talking about earlier about walk, uh, working backwards. So I'll always add another 15, 20 minutes to each of those things. And 15 to 20 minutes in between, e even if they're in the same spot. And if they're not in the same spot, then I'll add at least 45 minutes, you know, to allow to get from one place to another. Because something always runs late. And so throughout that timeline, I always, you know, I add 15 minutes here, half an hour buffer here. So one that when things do go behind schedule, that you know, it, there's a way to kind of make up for the last time. And two, just to make the whole day relax for the bride and the bridal party. She doesn't want to rush from one thing to the next, you know. She wants to be able to just sit there and relax and have the whole process be really fun for her and feel good about it versus feeling like there's a constant time pressure. Well, there's also the other question, Jasmine. What if the bride and groom don't want to see each other before the wedding ceremony? How do you work with that in terms of timing? Um, well, I just, it's, again, it goes back to having a conversation in open communication. Um, the wedding that I shot before last weekend's wedding, they didn't want to have a first look. And so I explained to her in advance that the time that we would have to photograph her and her husband would be abbreviated. And it's not the ideal working situation, but because she really wanted to have um, that moment as she walked down the aisle, I just explained to her that um, I would need more than just um, 60 minutes on like during a traditional cocktail hour it's 60 minutes but to have 60 minutes for bridal party pictures for family pictures both immediate and extended bride and groom photos cocktail hour photos and then also have like reception detail photos I had I called her wedding coordinator and I just explained I said I need to get at least 15 or 20 minutes extra in that cocktail hour if you want to get the wedding details and because the bride had put so much time and effort into those details she said fine we'll extend the cocktail hour for 20 minutes and that's um, kind of how I approach the situation and again it just goes back to working fast and having open communication and explaining to the bride that family pictures cannot go beyond you know 25 minutes and everybody who's there for the family pictures has to be there for the family pictures and if they are not there for the family pictures then we'll just um, do that at some point during the reception so we'll set up like a if a family member missed a family shot I don't mind shooting another family shot later on throughout the reception it just won't be where um, the family formals all originally took place but again it's just picking up and running because you have such a short amount of time yeah and considering speaking of the short amount of time that we have question is for Laura from Audrey um, what might you, ha it, you there's probably going to be some compromises on the on the way to this because of the short timeline so there um, Audrey is curious as to what is it that you feel like you not going to compromise on what is what are the most important things to you to get right Wow um, yeah 
to say the least, there's going to be some compromises. Um, and there are quite a few things we're not really willing to compromise on. <laughs> We're still gonna do a wedding invitation. It's gonna be more like an announcement because we don't know where the wedding is gonna be. So <laughs> we're, we're kinda thinking, no oh pressure. yeah, we're, we're, kinda, <laughs> we're kinda like celebrities. We're gonna tell them a fake location and then we're gonna call them the night before and be like, just kidding, it's gonna be here. Just to avoid all the paparazzi. <laughs> but, I don't think um, you're gonna get away from the paparazzi. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I don't know, I guess we're not really having to make too many compromises as far as like, the types of things that we want for our wedding, but we're having to sacrifice a lot of people being there. That's pretty big um, because it is such short notice, but um, I guess I hope that answers the question. Okay. okay. I believe that does cover that one. Um, I have another question from, from Milky in the chat room for Jasmine. Um, how would you encourage wedding photographers who are just starting out to find their own style? Um, we'll be definitely addressing this um, during the um, during the live course in a couple weeks. So I would love to answer that then as well, because I don't want to take too much attention away from um, this planning meeting and Laura's like big day. But um, as like a little appetizer or as a teaser, finding a style really depends not on your photography. It's going to depend a lot more on you as a person and your personality. So we'll talk a little bit, bit a little bit more about that as we approach the day, but um, that's kind of just like a little a little morsel to what you call it. <laughs> and another question from Life Camera Action. Um, what does your standard wedding package usually include? Um, are there, is it an album and prints or is, what can we look forward to seeing from this? Um, well, for, for Laura, we are gonna do like a slightly different thing and I'm pretty open and Laura, if you're cool with it too, I explained to Laura that it would be more advantageous for her because she is in the industry. Um, she doesn't need to use me as a middleman. I'm going to shoot her wedding and um, process her images through Lightroom and she will be getting a disc of high res images and she'll be able to put together an album on her own and get in, um, enlargements and prints as she sees fit. Oh, that sounds good. Yay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so do we have any other uh, questions we would like to ask our guests? Well, I don't want to be like totally rude and act diva, but I do have a conference call like in the next few minutes. So I don't know if that's going to affect it. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. We're, we're just about re ready to wrap up here anyway. Yeah, here, like, okay. Get the microphone the over minutes to Craig. And just talk about the style of the wedding itself, but we, I will be happy to fill you in at a later oh. time. Oh, well, can you guys give me a morsel or a turn? Sure. <laughs> I'd be happy to give you more. So I know, Craig, if you have... Um, the pictures ready. One of the things that I talked about with Laura is color palette, and it was before I saw this beautiful piece of fabric. Um, but in terms of color palette, she was she knew already that she was really drawn to warmth and to metallics, and um, and wanted a bolt of color with that. And so I basically worked up five different um, inspiration boards just based on. Um, playing around with metallics and adding in a bolt of color and we t kind of talked about you know what colors would be good what colors would not be good she didn't want orange or Billy didn't want orange, no um, orange. so we didn't work with orange um, but we played around with chartreuse yellow coral and so we can take a look at these really quickly um, if that's something that you can do Craig just like how you take control here. Daniela you're just there like <laughs> <laughs> that's right. so here's yellow um, we paired it with a pewter just because I thought that would look you know there's a, con a bit of contrast so that kind of pewter platinum color with the yellow you know has a little bit of that juxtaposition again with um, the rough and the lux that we were talking about so some different elements and the idea of maybe like a barn that has really rough wood and then having beautiful chandelier hanging beautifully set table and just some different you know this is basically just to see what do those colors look like together when you look at this you know what does that make you feel like Laura does that seem like it's warm does it make you feel inviting is it like oh that's too much how do you feel when you see those colors I love it I love I love everything about it I love the setting of the pewter with the with the yellow on top of it mm-hmm great all right well let's move to the next one 
And feel free, Laura, if you don't like something, say so. Like that, that, that helps. And in, in general, when you see things, when you're looking through designers' you know, portfolio, say what you don't like as much as what you like because we're not going to take it personally. And if we do, we'll let you know. <laughs> but you know, it helps to figure out what, what it is that you want. This one in, um, was a chartreuse. And so we mixed chartreuse with copper because, again, I like that kind of the cool, warm tone of the chartreuse against that really rich brown sugar copper color. Mm -hmm. And so those are the two colors we use in this one. So what, what kind of thoughts, whoops, do you have when you see the chartreuse and the copper? It feels really modern to me. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's just because of the tone of the green. Right. But I think adding in that copper color makes it more... Um, rich? Rich, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Okay, great. Move on to the next one. This one was supposed to be mostly fuchsia with some metallic, somehow some purple snuck in there. Um, and I know purple, we talked about this after we looked at this, is that purple isn't one of your favorite colors, and it's not really a favorite of mine, but you know, we can kind of imagine it without the dark purple. Yeah. Thoughts this one on feels this? very feminine to me. Yes, it is. It's very feminine and frilly. Yes which Billy probably wouldn't appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> I have done weddings where I'm pinning pink flowers on the guys, and I'm like, is that pink? <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the next one. So, so we've already eliminated yeah. one, which is fabulous. So this is coral, coral and golds. Um, coral is one of those colors you have to be really careful with. It can be really beautiful. It's a great summer color. If you imagine just melons and different coral tones, it can go really icky sweet really quick. It can get too peachy or too salmony, so you have to be really careful. I like if you look in the left-hand upper corner, the golds mixed with the coral can be really rich, really beautiful. When you look at the picture of the the dress, the gown, like that, to me is going a little bit too much. But you can from you know the basic idea, like the favors, you know the golds and the coppers and that coral tone. I like the idea of that. What do you think when you see this? I think of um, I think of summer when I see this, mm -hmm. and I really I agree with you. I think the upper left hand corner is definitely feels more luxurious and less um, like pinky. Mm -hmm. So right. yeah. Okay. And then the last one we have is cobalt blue. One of the reasons I picked this color as you know just to kind of show you um, as an accent color is because you had talked to me about these fabulous shoes that you might get that are these you know this beautiful cobalt blue color. So. Um, you know, this would be, again, the copper and the cobalt blue is a really pretty combination. You know, you could add in some gold as well to make it, you know, even more rich. Cobalt blues, and this particular color palette is, you know, you have to be a little bit careful with it when you talk about flowers, because there's definitely only so many blue flowers, and I'm never, ever going to dye a flower, so don't ask. <laughs> but um, what do you think when you see this? I really love this combination. It feels more evening, more... Um, luxurious, mm -hmm. um, but I agree with you. I would definitely stay away from blue flowers. Yes. Maybe go with like a white or a cream, cream. or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so I could see these really rich, beautiful satin cobalt blue linens with beautiful napkins, really beautiful textured cream flowers in, mm -hmm. in some sort of copper container and then the copper accents and maybe bringing in some of that gold and just making it really sumptuous and sexy and beautiful and mm -hmm. evening and lush, especially again against that combination of something more raw and rustic in the background. Absolutely. Well, fabulous. I feel like we have a couple good ideas yeah. and hopefully in the next day we can narrow it down to one and go from there. Wonderful. Does that help, Jasmine? Totally. I think it's funny because um, just from knowing Laura, like I, after looking at the, um, at the designs, like it's definitely the first and the last just look a lot more like her. So, yeah. and they're so beautiful. Like seriously, your inspiration boards are seriously beautiful. And I can't thank you enough from the bottom of my heart for all the hard work that you're putting into it. You are such a team player, and I know that Laura oh. is in such good hands. Oh, so thank, thank you. you. It's a joy for me as well, so, and I'm excited to finally get the chance to work with you, so. Good, good. There's so much love. <laughs> <laughs> all right, ladies, well, thank you again, Craig. Thank you, I appreciate it, and I wish you guys the best. Thanks, Jasmine. Thanks, Jasmine. Thanks, Jasmine. Thanks guys. <laughs> They're all your designs. And now I want to be honest. So these are definitely aren't mine designs. Like I definitely just you know 
because we have such a short time frame, I just pulled pictures off online. So sometimes some of my designs will be in this, but definitely these these aren't all my work. So definitely since we're broadcasting this on the internet, and I'm always very honest when I do mood boards like this, that it's really just, here's some work that's out there. I just want to get your gut reaction to it, see how you feel about these colors and these textures and so forth. And then, you know, once we have narrowed down a color palette, then we start putting our own work into it. So I don't want to say this is my work or, you know, all we did is basically put textures and colors and pictures together and there's definitely some amazing work that's being done out there that we get to uh, play around with so All right. Christy do you have any input on like when people do mood boards and inspiration boards it's not something that you guys usually feature on June bug but sometimes yes. sometimes that you know the end result definitely shows up from someone who's mm -hmm. started with that process um, I think that they're a really, really handy way to start to get your idea of, of what style and, you know, the colors, the look, the general atmosphere, the feel of the whole day that you want to communicate. Um, I think that keep in mind when you're using them that you, you it's not too literal. Right. You know, um, if, if someone, if you, if you build one for yourself, then you get too attached to it and then it's not exactly the same, it could be really disappointing or, you know, um, kind of stop you in your tracks. But to, to use them as a great tool just to give you a, great jumping off point to then make it your own, I think is the tool, um, or is the key to using them really well. We definitely build them on uh, Junebug. We post them on our blog uh, fairly often. We love to you know, both showcase the work of all the wedding professionals we work with, and then at the same time, the most fun for me is when brides write in and say, hey, I'm having this wedding, here's some of my ideas, but I, I'm not a visual person, I don't know how to, how to do this, can you give me a little guidance? So for me, it's a fun project to mm -hmm. get to put them together and you know, just give a little, hopefully give a little inspiration to them since I do spend most of my days looking at, at so many beautiful images. Um, but actually, Danielle, I was going to ask you, when you are using these, the difference between um, the yellow, the first one with the yellows and the golds, and the last one with the cobalt blue, because they're such mm -hmm. different, the cobalt blue is so much darker, richer, and then the yellow can be so light. When you're approaching a wedding and design, do you think of it, or what are your, do you have some general rules how you approach a very light color palette versus a very rich and dark color palette? Do you need more of one, like the cobalt blue, do you just need less of that color to make, to communicate it? Or, or is it, does it not matter? It definitely matters. Um, one of the things we look for, for example, you could do this, th like the yellow color palette in the evening, but you would have to play up the metallics more. If you have a you know, very light color scheme, something yellow can be more casual and more daytime. And so if we're having a really luxurious evening you know, event, then we would really want to play up the richness, the metallics, the golds, you know, and so forth. Um, with the cobalt blue, it's already feeling like a really evening, you know, kind of a sumptuous color, and we don't have to have that much of it to get that feeling across, and all of the colors in that color palette, the metallics and the cobalt are very rich, and so they're going to lend themselves more to an evening event. Um, one of the things that's always really critical, especially for photography and videography, is lighting. If you're going to have an event that has, you know, deep blues and golds and those kinds of colors, you need to have really good lighting. You know, bringing in a professional lighting person that can showcase all that. You know, if you have a room that's, you know, really darkly lit because you want the romantic candlelights and you have these dark centerpieces and these dark linens, but you don't light them properly, you're never going to see that. You're going to walk in a room and see a bunch of dark blobs. And so lighting them probably either having pin spots from the ceiling or even from, you know, high up on a wall and, and highlighting those tables makes all the difference in the world. So when you're seeing, you know, inspiration boards or you're seeing things in magazines and you have, see these beautiful uh, centerpieces that pop off the table, it's because they've been lit properly. And so lighting is one of those things that's often overlooked when you're designing an event because not a lot of people know about professional lighting and all the things that go into making an event look as amazing as that, but it takes the amazing photography, the great eye, the lighting, the flowers themselves and so forth. Yeah, and I'd add in um, for the photography especially, considering that, considering your lighting when you're thinking about your wedding photography, if you're really interested in getting your wedding published and you're, you know, so that means you probably have to have a lot of details photographed of right. the, you know, the table settings and the favors and all the extras. If you don't have it lit well or if you don't give the photographer time where there's no one in there, maybe they can adjust the lighting a little bit, yes. bring it up a little bit from where it would be during the rest of the event, um, then they're going to have a really hard time capturing those details as they're meant to be seen. Right. Um, and in that beautiful way that a magazine would be able to print them or a website would be able to show them you know with really good consistency in the photos mm -hmm. so that lighting is a hugely important thing to, to just think about and consider and, and determine how important it is to you and your goals for your day and that goes back to kind of that planning process of working backwards a little bit so when you know that will set a good 
you know, 20 minutes for that photographer to have room shots, as I call them, to completely empty out the room. I know the server wants to put the butter down and the water glasses down, but they, you know, we build that into the schedule and they know ahead of time, this is the photographer's time. And we will, we'll bring up the lights a little bit, you know, might not look as romantic, but when it's translated to film, you know, we need that light to, to create that picture. You know, to actually, you know, get the details of all the things that will look good in a magazine and that you'll have in your album, you know. So even if you're not worried about wanting to be, you know, editorial, you want those images of what the day was like. And, and we, working together as a team, know how to make that happen. So I, I just wanted to bring up, uh, there's a question in the chat room regarding uh, if we've look, narrowed down any of the location options yet. And I know that we have a backup plan, but um, I don't know that it's our ideal thought. Do we have any thoughts about that? Well, Laura hasn't seen it. Um, I just saw our backup spot this morning, and I love it. I'm <laughs> always up for a challenge. There's nothing I like more than having a blank space and getting to take the bride and groom's ideas and creating that in a space that has nothing in it. So the space that we looked at this morning is just this empty brick building with big, huge windows. And they're frosted windows, so it's not really, really bright. And I just that kind of thing just gets me excited. Because I can <laughs> totally, like, I can imagine her chandeliers and this beautiful fabric hanging. And I mean, I can do anything with that. So as a designer, like, for me to have a blank space versus fighting with the carpet and the things in the ballroom like that, that makes my heart sing. So, but. You know, we're looking at a couple different ideas. You know, we're looking at a hotel. We're looking at doing um, a couple different photo studios. So we've got a couple options out there that we're still playing with. I know Jasmine, for her, what's really important to her is real a lot of natural light. And so we're keeping that under consideration. It'd be nice to have a venue that's all set up, but, you know, where, where the catering's in-house and everything's really easy considering there's going to be so many different things to consider. But I think we've narrowed it down to maybe four or five spots. We're still hoping that something else maybe drops in our lap and in the next three days or so, we're going to narrow it down. That's my goal. And I think Craig would sleep better at night as well. I would definitely sleep better at night <laughs> once we've made the decision. But actually, this is since we've got the internet on the line, let's, let's describe what we're looking for in case in the next three days. We have our, we have our backup. Great idea. We have our yep. backup. This is a four-week wedding. And I, I'll tell you, we had three backups originally until um, <laughs> until you chose me <laughs> until, until with chose my you, difficult exactly. request. We, we, we fell in love with a bride that had too many friends. <laughs> so all of our backup plans went out the window. So we literally were scrambling for locations. We've now got a backup plan in case we don't find another venue. Correct. But but let's put it out to the world that we are looking okay. for a venue in Seattle that can hold about 200 people. Mm -hmm. That's got a lot of natural life. Yeah, that's we've true. kind of pared it down a little bit. So we're hoping more for like... 125 to 150. So 125 to 150 guests plus a camera crew. Plus a camera crew. Plus a camera crew in the Seattle area. Um, mm -hmm. You have to have good internet or be in an area that we can pipe in good internet. I mean, that's something we can take care of if, if it's orderable in your area. Right. Um, and we need to have a lot of natural light for Jasmine to be able to do her thing. Right. This is the opportunity. If someone has a space out there, it could be a space that is not designed for weddings, never been used for weddings. This could be your opportunity to find something to do with that space. Right. Um, this could be a space that is for lease. This could be an old commercial space that's really cool that uh, you never even thought about until someone online started mentioning it. <laughs> um, it could be an old restaurant that, for some reason, you know, is 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 out of business right now. You know, there's been a lot of kind of changeover in businesses. Um, could be a barn out somewhere that's got internet. That's the tricky part about barns. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, so we have basically basically three or four days that we are going to open ourselves up for that kind of uh, amazing serendipitous. coincidence, serendipitous moments that might come up. So if anyone online has a place in Seattle you would love to see a Jasmine Star uh, photo shoot in. Think about the amazing photos you're going to get. I mean, if you want some great media, here it is. Absolutely. And we've got a, we've got a what's up? Oh, and, and it needs to be, and our, our producer is actually reminding me to mention the days it needs to be available, which is basically August 26th and 27th. Ideally, August 25th through the 27th are the days that it would need to be available. Um, so it, we're going to be putting out this video later, so we'll just kind of remind people that, you know, if someone has a space in Seattle and wants to be part of a really cool online wedding and photo shoot, speak up very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> So I think we're, we're ready to wrap up today's show. And we'll be back, by the way, same time next week. And uh, we'll discuss more about what's going on with the wedding and, and how it's progressing. All right. Fabulous. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you.